Now, to continue the lesson, you have to take note that the principal square root of a positive integer is either rational or irrational. It actually depends on the value of the radicand. Please take note that if the radicand is a perfect square, then the square root is rational. Otherwise, it is irrational. Let's say, for example, for letter A, square root of 16. Since 16 is a perfect square, then the value of square root of 16 would give you a rational number. For letter B, square root of 115, the radicand is a non-perfect square. That means that the value of this radical would give you an irrational number. For letter C, square root of 90, 90 is not a perfect square. That means that the radical will give you an irrational number. And lastly, for letter D, square root of 225, the radicand is a perfect square. So that means that the value of the given radical is a rational number. For radicals that are rational numbers, we can easily get the value of them. Say for example, for letter A, square root of 16 is equivalent to positive 4 if we are referring to the principal square root, and square root of 225 is equal to positive 15. For irrational numbers, we can still get the values of this, but we are only going to estimate and that is upon using a certain method which is called the divide and averaging method. And here are the steps. So let's say for example, we are to approximate the square root of 40 to the nearest hundreds. Step 1 is to estimate. In estimating, you are to determine two integers between which the given square root lies. From the given, the radicand is 40. So identify two perfect squares wherein 40 is in between. And this are... 36 and 49. The inequality would be something like this. Square root of 40 is greater than square root of 36 but less than square root of 49. 36 and 49 are the two perfect squares that are nearest to 40, wherein 40 is in between them. Next thing that you need to do is to get the square root of the two perfect squares at the beginning and at the end of the inequality. Square root of 36 is equal to positive 6 and square root of 49 is equal to positive 7 in terms of the principal square roots. So the inequality would now be like this. This means that the value of square root of 40 is greater than 6 but less than 7. So that means that it is somewhere in between 6 and 7, say perhaps 6 point something. And for step 1, we're going to make use of 0.5. So this means that our answer for step 1 is 6.5 as our estimated number. Now for step 2, we are going to divide the radicand by the estimate. The radicand would be coming from the given, which in this case is 40, and the estimated number is your answer in step 1, which is in this case 6.5. So if we're going to divide, it would be 40 divided by 6.5, which is equal to 6.15. Always remember, to round off your answer to the nearest hundreds. Next, for step 3, we're going to get the average of the divisor and the quotient. In step 2, the divisor is the second number, or if you use the division box, this means that the divisor is the number outside the division box, which in this case, that is referring to 6.5. So for step 3, we're going to get the average of 6.5 and 6.50. So the equation would be something like this. 6.5 plus 6.50 divided by 2. When we add the numerator, it will give us 12.65 and then divide it by 2 and the answer would be 6.325. Then again, from the given instruction, you have to round it off to the nearest hundreds, so the answer is 6.33. Now to express the final answer, it would be square root of 40, which is approximately 6.33. Notice that the symbol used is not an equal sign. That is simply because 6.33 is not equivalent to square root of 40. It is only an approximation. So this is the proper symbol to be used in expressing your final answer. Now, open your Schoology and estimate the square roots of the given numbers to the nearest hundreds place using divide and averaging method.